ChatGPT will do that and more. It will be the way we interact with everything. So OpenAI just leaked the strategy for 2025 and 2026. I don't know if this is like one of those don't tell anyone or if it was actually leaked. I don't know and I don't care actually, but it's a memo that has been released to the public. Well, somebody got a hold of it and um, I decided to make a video because I thought it was interesting to say the least. So where does OpenAI go? What's the direction that we're going to have to follow towards? Cause you know, this is the stuff that is uh, dictating the future. There is this post I found on LinkedIn from this guy, Tom Alder. You can read the contents of this leaked memo and you can find them in the description, but I'm just going to give you the bullet points or what is actually interesting from that memo. I'm going to deliver that in a shorter video. So apparently they're not just building a chatbot, right? What is OpenAI? So it's a chat GPT, you play around with it. You have the plus plan and then you have the pro plan and you can query it and ask it to do different things, generate images, help you solve stuff, help it be your assistant, etc. It's not just that, it's the OpenAI platform which you can leverage their models. So you, with an API, you can use any of those models you use using ChatGPT. You can use them to do perform different tasks, like help you deliver a customer experience strategy, like how you can improve a customer experience strategy or define an implementation plan, etc. This is just in our universe of being Zendesk consultants. By the way, my name is Dominic. I'm a customer experience enthusiast. I've been one for 15 plus years. I've been 12 years as Zendesk consultant and onwards with the video. So it seems that they're not just building the chatbot, but they're building an operating system. So by 2026, ChatGPT GPT wants to be your interface for the internet. So what does that even mean? So as ChatGPT evolves, it will replace more and more things like search engines, browsers, etc. It seems that the guys never actually intended to build a SaaS or software as a service, like a website that you access and it's a software there which you can access by paying access fee depending on the plan that you choose. Seems that they never wanted that. OpenAI board rather seems surprised by the success of these uh, plans of Plus and Pro. And it's kind of an inconvenience, like a thorn in what they want to actually do. And why is that? Well, it seems that they're building something much bigger. They want to own the relationships between every human on Earth. Holy crap. They want a physical device by 2026. Not an app, not a website, but a device. And let me just quote this one so I get it exactly right. Today, ChatGPT is in our lives through existing form factors, our website, phone, and desktop apps. But our vision for ChatGPT is to help you with all of your life, no matter where you are. They seem to be wanting to sell an iPhone and the App Store with it, or an Android device and the Google Play Store. <laughs> and to quote again, the best AI is the one that is always there for you. Why do they want to make this move? Well, they are terrified of being put in a box by Apple, Google, Microsoft, and uh, you know, these guys could just release a competing AI software, which would just take them out or, you know, being in the box, they would just be that in that box and nothing else. So in the document, it literally says they want to fight for user choice experience because platform owners like Google, Microsoft and Apple could just push them away. So what does this mean for startups? What does it mean for you? And for me, for that matter. So if ChatGPT becomes your interface for everything, every app needs to be available as a backend service or as an API. You have a restaurant booking app, ChatGPT calls your API. You have a calendar app, ChatGPT moves your meetings around. You have an email client, well, ChatGPT drafts and sends emails for you. ChatGPT, 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 ChatGPT. So now the question is, will OpenAI replace apps? It's rather, will your app survive if it's just being accessed through an API? Will it? And here's the quote, so I say it exactly like they did. All human computer interactions can be mediated by ChatGPT. Just as the web intermediates much of our work, commerce, social, and entertainment activity today, ChatGPT will do that and more. It will be the way we interact with everything.
All right, it's not that dramatic, but uh, to capitalize on this opportunity, it seems that OpenAI needs to build a platform and not on a platform. Because for example, Google owns Android and Chrome, Apple owns iOS and Mac OS, Microsoft owns Windows, while OpenAI owns a website, an app, and the world's most popular and powerful AI models. And it also owns a mind-boggling 80% of consumer mindshare in what it means to have an AI. So everybody, when they think of AI, they think of ChatGPT or OpenAI. But this uh, mindshare doesn't really count for anything if you just switch it off. So there you have it. This is the plan for the next two years for OpenAI. And it seems that they are aiming big and uh, we'll see what unfolds in the next uh, year and a half, two years. I personally think this is good. I mean, more competition is good. I don't like the fact that, you know, there's a big monopoly on OSs and whoever shows up is immediately either bought or canceled or, you know, starved, essentially. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. I'd be really grateful and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.